What's really interesting to us about the sound that you hear is say, for example, when you hear the glacial seismic data, it really does sound like what you imagine if you could stick your head inside a glacier. With a lot of our work, we play with the idea of sound and image being a kind of synesthesia where sound makes the image and image makes the sound. We play with this idea so that it creates a physicality. Fabrica's autumn exhibition is the UK premiere of Earthworks, a piece of work created by Joe Gerhardt and Ruth Jarman, who are semiconductor, and it represents the formation of the landscape. So when the audience enter Earthworks, they will see five screens which fill the space, and they create this zigzag that moves across the space, and this represents a quarry space or the face of the earth as if you're looking inside the earth. There's a very physical presence to the sound which is generated from seismic data. So you feel the sound and you see the sound. In Earthworks, we've collected seismic data in four different areas. So we're listening to glacial seismic data, volcanic seismic data, which is apparently meant to be magma that's moving inside the volcanic chambers, earthquakes, so the earth shifting, and then also we worked with the University of Barcelona to collect seismic data from an active quarry, a Sarige quarry. And the interesting thing about seismic data is not only is it picking up vibrations from these environments, but because it's documented as a waveform, you can directly translate that into sound. So we're not listening to something which is suggesting the seismic data, but it's actually the data. So what you're seeing in Earthworks is taken from the idea of analog modelling, which we um, discovered as a technique that's been worked with scientists for hundreds of years, but more so in the, in the Victorian era, where they, they used sand in layers and compressed it and pushed it around to recreate the movement of the earth. We used that idea, but recreated it with modern CGI. Within this work, we play with the idea of the Anthropocene, where humans are impacting the planet on a geological scale. With our seismic data we've collected in a quarry, you can actually hear the sound of humans literally shifting the earth. We, we juxtapose this with the idea of, of landscape changing through deep time as well. So on one hand, it is what we're doing today in, on a very short period of time. And on another hand, we're listening to the sound of earthquakes, which of course are things that have formed and created the planet the way it is. For the audience, this work is a way, it's like an invitation for them to step out of their daily experiences, to experience something on a geological time frame, something which can seem quite scary. It brings the earth to life in a way that we don't normally experience. The earth is in this constant state of flux, but to us it just seems to be static. So this is a perfect language to use to try and get people to engage with the idea of the Anthropocene, that the Earth is constantly changing, and then the impact that we are having on the Earth long term. One of the movements that's always inspired us is, is land art. So land art was a movement of um, artists who were moving away from the gallery to create large-scale landscape interventions, which in a way weren't meant to be experienced in person. They were more conceptual ideas that were ways of changing the planet on a very large scale with some installations that were, were miles big. We're playing around with this, this idea in a, in a kind of 21st century way, where we're taking land art into the gallery through technology playing around with it in a way that becomes immersive. And so this is, in a way, is a nod towards th those inspirations. So throughout our 20 years of working together, we've done many science residencies where we'll go into science laboratories and work with incredible scientists. We always thought we were interested initially in the scientific tools because they would extend our perceptions. So we'd be able to experience nature in a way we can't ordinarily. 
But as we were making these works, we started to notice that the science products that we would work with always came with a particular signature, whether that was with the type of technology that had captured them, um, or how nature would interact with the kind of language that scientists need to use. So there was always this presence of man in some way inherent in the technology. So this is why we're really interested in, say, like with earthworks, looking at nature, but through this language of science and technology, because we always want to acknowledge that at the end of the day, science is a language. It isn't about necessarily telling the truth, it's about answering questions. And so for our audiences, we want them to be able to think about science in a new way, that it's this tool for questioning and it isn't necessarily nature that we're directly experiencing. Earthworks refers to and in, in a sense gives us an experience of deep time. So that's really, that's geological time and highlights the Anthropocene, which is the era we're in now, the geological era of human activity and human impact on the planet. I think by using the work in a sense as a platform to think about these incredibly long-term and local environmental issues, we play a very important role as a cultural venue. I think culture can introduce issues that are really important, that are really fundamental to our localities and our society as a whole. But to do that in human terms, to recognise that we need to understand and find meaning in the world. And if there's a hope, and I hope there is, of changing our behaviour towards landscape and the environment for the better, then we can be part of that process.